Welcome to Tech with Mike First. This will be a first in a series of videos I call Pushing the Envelope with Premiere Pro, where we will examine some of the more interesting things you can do in Premiere and how to get the most from the program. I have been editing in Premiere Pro since version 1.0 on projects from 30 second broadcast commercials to two hour feature films, editing everything from DV video to 8K anamorphic digital cinema content. This video is going to start with some of the basics, not of the program itself, but how to prepare to use it on large-scale collaborative productions. I'm going to assume that you already know how to use Premiere Pro, because if not, there are already tons of resources out there that I don't need to replicate. The first thing we will look at is hardware. Storage is the most significant decision on large projects, especially when collaborating with other editors. While hard disks are usually the best option for large data sets like video footage, Having an SSD for project files, temp files, and exports can be very helpful for more efficient workflows. I store all of my source footage on a large hard disk RAID, the P drive, and my projects, media cache, and temp files on a separate shared NVMe drive, the X drive. Both of these are shared over a 10 gig network to all of my systems. If I'm working on a large single project like a feature film, I usually share the media cache and database as well. Adobe doesn't recommend this shared media cache approach, and I only use it with careful planning in controlled environments where I'm usually only importing media on one system, but it saves time and space when using large sets of media. To be safer, you can have each system manage its own media cache, but each system will have to generate and store these files every time new media is imported into the project. On larger projects, it can be helpful to further isolate audio files on a dedicated SSD due to the higher I.O. needs of audio playback. If you take that approach, that is also where you will want to put your captured audio and audio preview files. For data security reasons, your project autosave folder should be set to a different drive than your project is normally saved on. And having another RAID or SSD volume to save exported files to allows one RAID to read source data to the system while the resulting data is saved to a different volume for maximum performance. Projects clearly need to be saved on a shared drive, ideally an SSD. Now these can be productions composed of mini project files, which really helps with loading and saving times. But this is the directory that should be backed up on a regular basis, probably multiple times a day, compared to your media drive that only needs to be backed up once, and your exports directory which might only need to be backed up weekly, since all those files can be generated again if necessary. I duplicate and increment my sequences every time I make an export, with the archive sequence matching the versioning of the exported file, in case you ever need to return to that state in the future. With large sequences like two-hour films, it is now easier to duplicate the entire project file for best performance, with only one copy of the master sequence in any given project version. For smaller sequences, this is unnecessary, and it's easier to compare between versions if they're in the same project. I also prefer to prefix my project files with an abbreviation of the project name, so they are easier to identify in menus. Then a description of the asset, like Real 1, or Episode 14, and then the version info. I usually version by number and then letter. Sequence names should match, although you can drop the project abbreviation if desired, depending on if all exports are going to include that. Exports should match the sequence name, since that is the default and it enables tracking back your work. For example, in my Project X film, we divided it into six reels, each in their own project. Within those real projects, we have at the most three to four versions of that reel incremented at least once every day that we work at that section. So PX Reel 1 Edit Version 11G contains my last export in Reel 1 Version 11F, and I'm now working on Reel 1 Version 11G. In this case, I also suffix the sequences with the date that we worked on them. If my files were coexisting with ones from totally separate projects, I would keep the PX underscore prefix on everything, including the sequences for consistency. If that project is the main thing happening on the whole system, this is redundant and unnecessary. The rest of the assets are all on one large RAID, folded in a self-explanatory way. Audio, dailies, GoPro, proxies, red footage, VFX. I would usually recommend putting the red footage and GoPro files into a single footage folder, especially if you have more source types. But this should give you a good starting point for how to organize your files and name your projects and sequences. For more detailed info, check out techwithmikefirst.com.